Hi, I'm Reen Wilcoxon, founder of Embroidery Garden and co-developer of In The Hoop Designer Software. In this video tutorial, I'll show you how to take one of the built-in mini quilt hangings, customize it, and then resize it to fit any size stand or hanger you might have. In this tutorial, I will show you how to start with one of the mini quilt hanging templates and customize it for a completely different look. This mini quilt hanging is one of the over 200 built-in templates in In The Hoop Designer software. You could save it to your machine embroidery format and stitch it out as is. In my customized design, you can see that I changed the background quilting from this gridded type pattern to a wave. I also replaced the fall theme design with a built-in snowman and snowflakes. I changed the lettering to something else and changed the font style. After customizing the hanging, this is an 8x8 size, I reduced it to a 6x6 size to fit this 6x6 metal stand. I then took it and enlarged it to fit a 12x12 stand. As you can see, all of the sizes stitched out beautifully. I'm also going to show you a little trick to change the density of the snowman so that you can use a piece of mylar underneath it. You can see how shiny he is. By increasing the density number, the stitches will be further apart in the fill. This allows the mylar to shine through. On the snowman, the white areas stitch first. So before stitching the snowman, place a piece of mylar down. Stitch the white sections, then gently tear the mylar from around the stitching and continue with the snowman design. I also use King Star Metallic for the snowflakes. In the Hoop Designer software allows you to customize and create endlessly. To create the snowman hangings, I started with the built-in template from In the Hoop Designer software. In the upper left, click on the wizard hat and this will open the In the Hoop wizard. Under template, click open and then scroll down to hangings 8x8. I chose this hanging that has built-in borders going around it. Click OK and it brings it into the wizard. At this point I could change the size here. I could change the design from that fall design to another design from any of the built-in categories or I could click custom and choose the design from my personal stash. I can also change the lettering. All I would do is just highlight it, type in something else, and hit apply. For this particular demo, I'm going to do all of my editing once I have the design brought onto the screen. Under instructions, this is where you find the PDF tutorials for all of the templates. They are photo instructions that take you through stitching the design. You can follow along on your computer or you can print these out. I'm going to click OK and put the design on the screen. First, let's take a look at the sewing sequence over on the right hand side. So these are all of the steps in the design. A few of the things that I'm going to be changing, I'm going to change the background quilting I'm going to change the text. I'm going to be changing what it says and the font style. And I'm going to be changing the design that is inside of the hanging. It's important to be aware of the way the design stitches in the order that it stitches. Since I brought my design in and I'm doing everything on screen instead of through the wizard, it's important to know where each of these steps stitch. First, I'll bring in the snowman that I want. In the upper left, I'm going to click on Designs, drop down to Holidays and Seasons, Christmas and Winter, and then I'm going to pick the snowman. I want this one right here. Click OK, and it puts it on the screen. Now notice in the sequence window, since I added the snowman, he stitches last. But the snowman actually needs to stitch at the same time that this little fall theme design would stitch. So I'm going to select my snowman 
hold down the left mouse and drag it up so that it is right next to the fall themed design. I don't need that fall themed design, so I will select it and hit delete. Next, I'm going to change the lettering and the font. If we look in the sequence window, we can see that it stitches before the design stitches. So just keep that in mind. So let's create new lettering. I'm gonna to go to the top menu bar, click on the text tool, and then just click anywhere in the design space. This will open up the text window in the upper right. I'm going to type in what I want my hanging to say. I'm gonna put winter on one line, hit enter, and then wishes on the next line. And use a built-in font, click the drop-down menu, and here are all of the fonts built into in the Hoop Designer software. I'm going to use Diana VS, and I'm gonna click Apply. Here is my text, and then again, if you look at the sequence window in the bottom right, you'll see that it stitches last because it's something that I added. So I'm going to select it, drag it up to where the other text is, and now I can click the old text, select it, and delete it. So now I'm gonna take my snowman, I'm just going to move him kind of where I'm gonna want him to be. I'll take my text, I'll move it where I want it to be, the general area. I think I'm going to enlarge my text a little bit. And I may enlarge my snowman just a bit. The next thing I'm going to change is the background fill. So over in the sequence window, I'll select the background fill. This opens up the fill properties in the upper right. Right now it's a motif. I changed mine to a wave stitch. I want my waves to be a little bit further apart than the default of two. So I'm just gonna change it to 28 and hit apply. Now you can see my waves are going from top to bottom. In my finished design, I had the waves going across. So to do that, while the fill is selected, in the upper left, click the shape tool, and you're going to see this yellow line. It's going right down the center of the design. I'll grab the top node, I'll move it over to the left hand side, I'll grab the bottom node, move it over to the right hand side. Then I can select this center node and I can use these handles and then I can edit the curve of my wave any way that I want. When I have it where I want it, I'll just click outside of the design or I can click the select tool and then my waves have changed from going up and down to going across. Another thing that I brought in were some snowflakes. Top menu, I'm going to click on the charm designs, and these are smaller designs. Drop down to the holidays and seasons, Christmas, winter, and then I scrolled down and I grabbed a snowflake. Click OK, it puts it on the screen, and then just move them to wherever you want them to be. I added three, so I'm gonna do a copy, paste, move that one and do another paste and move that one. Kind of line them up how you want them to be. And then notice in the sequence window that since I added the snowflakes, they are stitching last. So I'm gonna select them all, hold down the left mouse and drag them up so that they stitch after the snowman. It doesn't matter whether these snowflakes stitch after the lettering or after the snowman. They just have to stitch around the same time as the lettering and the snowman do. Once you have everything how you want it, I like to select everything that is inside of my hanging, my text, my snowman, and my snowflakes, and then come up to the ruler at the top of the screen right click and center origin. And what that does is it takes those things that I selected and centers them onto the hanging. I made a few other changes to my hanging. Notice the snowman has holly in his hat. 
I didn't really want holly on mine because I feel that's more Christmas than winter. So I'm going to get rid of the holly and these berries. I'll select my snowman, right click and ungroup it so that I can then go in and delete what I don't want. Here are the two uh, sections of the leaves. Select those, hit delete. I'm just going to delete the berries one by one here. Notice there is a little bit of underlay. Make sure that you get everything um, deleted that you want deleted. Look at this orange color. It's going to stitch the nose and the buttons at the same time. I don't want my buttons to be orange. I want my buttons to be black. So all I'm going to do is just select the two buttons, drop down to the color palette at the bottom, and I will right click on number 22, which is the color for the other black areas, like the arms and the eyes. Now, another thing, I wanted my arms to be brown. And right now they are black and they will stitch at the same time that all of the other black stitches in the design. So let's change the color of the arm so that we have a color stop. I'm going to select each arm. I'll hold down my control key and select that other arm. And with the arm selected, I'll change the color. I'll go ahead and I'm just going to use this brown, right click, and you see it changed the color of the arms. When I am changing colors in my design, what I like to do first is right next to the color palette here at the bottom of the screen, you see a plus and you see a minus. Minus removes colors that are not used in the design shown on the screen. So I'm just going to do that and notice a lot of the colors left and these are the only colors at the bottom that are left in my design. A lot of people love to change colors of their designs. You can certainly do that. I stitched my snowflakes in Kingstar Metallic so I can select the snowflakes. I don't see Kingstar Metallic down here in my color palette. So what I can do is right click on one of the empty boxes click add color. This is not the color I want. It just puts a color in there. So to change that color, I just click on it. I can come up to the drop down menu, select King Star Metallic. I'm going to want this silver color. Click OK. You see that it changed it down at the bottom of the screen, but to apply it to my snowflakes, I'm going to right click. And now you can see my snowflakes are shown in the King Star Metallic. If you want to change the color in your snowman, you see he's kind of a bluish color. I'm going to select these two areas. I don't see white down here in my color palette, so I'm going to click on an empty square, right click on the empty square, click add color. Not the color I want, so I'm going to click on it. It opens up the palette. I'll change it to white, click OK, then right click to apply it to my snowman. And you can see now that he's white. One last thing that I showed you in my snowman sample was that I had used mylar underneath. So to do that, I'm going to select both these white areas of the snowman. And you see that it opens up the fill window. The density right now is 0.45. I actually changed it to 0.95. Also notice all these bars over here. They're very close together. So when you put the number up, again, I'm going to change it to 0.95, hit apply, and look at the bars, how they spread apart. So when you're using Mylar, you want the stitches to spread apart so that you can see in between them just a little bit so that that Mylar shines through. So let's grab the magnifying glass here and zoom in on an area and you can see what I mean. See how there are spaces now between the stitches and that's just going to allow that mylar to shine through. Okay, so at this point I am done with my design. So I'm going to go up to File, 
save as, and I would save it with a name that I can recognize. So for example, I save this one as Snowman Mini Hanging 8x8. To get the three different sizes of hangings, this is the 8x8 size. I selected everything, come up to the upper right to the transform window, and then to make this fit a 6x6 metal hanger or stand, I'm going to change the size and to make this fit into my brother 6x10 hoop, I'm going to change it to 5.99. Hit apply. So now this has been resized. Everything's going to stitch great. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to go to file, save as. And this one I saved to mini, uh, snowman mini hanging 6x6. To get the size for the larger hanging that I did that fits the 12 by 12 stand, I went back to the eight by eight size. So I could either open up that eight by eight size or I could just hit undo. That puts me back at my eight by eight size. Go to the transform window again. And for my hoop, I changed the size to 11.25. Hit apply. Let me bring this so that it's all into the screen. And now I have a larger size hanging that I can stitch out. And again, file, save as. And this time I changed the name to Snowman Mini Hanging 12 by 12. When you're ready to stitch these out, you can open them up, go to file, save as, use the drop down menu at the bottom of the screen and save it as your machine embroidery format. And this was how easy it was to go from that autumn hanging to a fully customized cute snowman hanging.